Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Chicago, Zooming with the Alder Persons Pro series of interviews. My name is Ar Margaret Herring. Following the adoption of the 19th Amend Amendment to the US Constitution, which granted women the vote, in 1920, the League of Women Voters was founded here in Chicago. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages citizens informed and active participation in government. It works to increase citizens' understanding of public policy issues, and it works to influence public policy through education and advocacy. The Chicago League is one of hundreds of leagues throughout the United States. These interviews of older persons are part of the Chicago League's efforts to educate people about those who represent us in setting the policies and enacting the ordinances that govern us here in Chicago. Today, our guest is Felix Cardona, who represents the 31st Ward. Welcome, Alderman Cardona. We appreciate your taking the time to be with us. Please know that this, this Zoom session is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the Chicago League's website. We'll be sending you, Alderman Cardona, and everyone who registered for the program and who is not a member of the Chicago League, a link to the video when it becomes available February 24th. Also, everyone should know that before this interview, the Chicago League provided Alderman Cardona a copy of the questions that I will be asking him. Before starting the questions, we want to show you a map of all 50 wards for the city of Chicago. And here, here's the 31st ward. Alderman Cardona, would you describe your ward? Where is it located in the city? And what are the main boundaries? Well, first of all, I would like to thank the Women's League, uh, the League of Women's Voters for conducting this interview. And uh, just answering the question, yes, my, my ward is located on the Northwest side. Um, and it's, it's pretty much, you know, um, pretty much on the, I would say from the, from the west all the way to Major Street, going to the east to Central Park, going all the way north to Addison and going south to Fullerton Avenue. What neighborhoods does it include? Well, interesting you, you asked that question. My neighborhood uh, consists of uh, Belmont Cragen, Hermosa, South Portage, a little piece of Emmerdale, and what is called West Logan Square. Uh, and it circumfaces, uh, I believe, one, two, five neighborhoods. So it's, I, it's pretty much covers uh, that. Well, how would you describe the makeup of your ward? Is it largely residential, commercial, industrial? So my ward is basically all residential. Uh, it's, the, it's in the middle of the bungalow belt. So how the city of Chicago, the single family homes over here is uh, back then, it, 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 the houses were bungalows. So the 31st ward is basically the bungalow belt of the Northwest side. I do have some two flats but it's basically residential. I do have some corridors that are commercial industrial, but majority of it, it's residential. What are the uh, few key issues that your residents um, have articulated to you? So their concerns. The concerns in, in, over here in my ward it's similar to other uh, wards up here on the Northwest side, which is public safety, schools. Uh, we have COVID response, uh, business development, mental health. Those are, so, those are some of the key issues that, that are going on in my ward and surrounding wards uh, around me as well. 
you were elected to the first elected to the city council in 2019. Why did you decide to run? Why well, I decided to run, uh, and I and I, and I always put the blame on my father. <laughs> <laughs> May he rest in peace. Uh, my father was very involved politically in Humble Park. Uh, we, my dad, um, was a businessman. Uh, came to uh, Chicago in, in the 1960s from Puerto Rico. Um, he was one of the uh, first group of businessmen that created a credit union for Latinos back in the late 70s, early 80s, because Latinos had problems getting mortgages and loans and stuff like that. So a group of businessmen got together uh, with, the, with the federal uh, banking system and created uh, a credit union for Latinos, which was called the Caballeros de San Juan, which is, uh, um, which is uh, in English, uh, uh, Columbus Knights of San Juan of, of Puerto Rico. Um, and because of him being involved in that sense of atmosphere, I basically um, grew up in that, in that atmosphere myself. Um, at the same time, uh, we, he had two bodegas and because he had two bodegas uh, and he acquired a, one of the bodegas at the, when I was at the age of four and I've been working since the age of four with my dad. Uh, so being around him, seeing how, how, how he was involved in community, always serving uh, and doing stuff like that. I was, and my mom, uh, I, I grew up in that, in that atmosphere. And um, when the time came in 20, I, I would say in 2018, um, I saw how my community was, was how, how, was, how, how, how things were, and I wasn't very happy. So I took a stand and I ran for alderman. And I was, um, I, I ended up in a runoff with the former alderman, Mili Santiago. And I, we, in the runoff, uh, I, I was victory. I, 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 I worked really hard and got the message out and I was brought to victory. So that's how, that's how the, the, whole, the whole thing became for me running for alderman. Well, it's a, trick. it's a family trait to be involved in the community. Yes. Do you have, do you have any other employment besides being a council um, member of the city council? No, my whole thing is this is a full time job, um, and you know I don't I really don't honestly I don't know how you could have a second job doing this job because this job just takes a whole lot of time and. Um, you know, like me, I'm always I'm always on the streets in my in my in my community in my ward, um, and sometimes I sit down and I'm like, I don't know how people in the past could have two jobs, this and doing a, another job, because uh, it's just this is very um, it's very long long hours, and if you love it, you know this is the only job someone had, and I love this job, I love serving the communities, and this is the only job I. I I, I, I have at this moment. What committees of the city council do you serve on? Well, I serve on several committees. Um, I serve on contract oversight and equity, ethics, government and oversight, environment protection and energy, human relations and health, special events, cultural affairs and recreation, pedestrian and traffic safety, zoning landmarks and building standards. Just attending the meetings would keep you busy. Uh, oh, yeah. Selecting oh, one of the- So also on the immigration, I, I apologize, I forgot. I'm also on the immigration one with uh, Alderman Boys being the chair. I'm on that other committee. Selecting one of these committees, what matters come comes before it? Well, um, I would say zoning and landmarks. So zoning and landmarks, uh, what comes what uh, comes before is if if um, if a certain business wants to come into a ward, they have to have uh, it has to be zoned for a particular business and so forth. So um, that's very interesting because you know zoning is um, 
if you want to put a beauty shop, you have to have a certain zone for it. If you want to put a grocery store, it has to be zoned. So that that one alone, and especially for development, you know, um, for you know development of affordable housing or development in Oz, it has to go through zoning. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, that committee. That's a, a lot of a, a lot of interest now in uh, interest in redevelopment in areas of the city. What if yes. any? What if any changes would you like to see made in the operation of the council? You've been on it now for two or more than two years. Yes. Uh, one of the changes I would like to see is be, being more transparent uh, when, when it comes to voting. So right now we're working on an electronic voting system. So basically we have uh, iPads in, in our chairs or in our desk and city council. And then, you know, right at this moment, when we vote, we have to verbally say yes or yay or nay. On this, we would put it on our iPads that is assigned to us. And basically you would see the question on the board uh, if you're watching through Zoom or you're there and you would see how we vote yay or nay with the question instead of hearing us. Uh, because sometimes that gets lost in translation, us saying yay or nay, because other things are going on. So um, those are one of the those are one of the changes I would love to see uh, happening. It's going to happen, but it's going to we're working in the process, but eventually it's going to get done. Well, currently the the first vote that's taken, it's by roll call, and then the. Um, mover of the motion asks that it be by that vote. And if there's someone who's not in agreement with what, how they voted before, and uh, that's noted, would this change? Yes, because everything will be, so it's like almost like Springfield. So when they vote, they push that button, yes or no. It's similar to that. It's gonna be similar to, to that in city council. It would be a great change. Oh yeah. What are a few of the actions the city has taken to reduce gun vi gun violence that you think has been has been or will be effective? Well, one of one of the things is seeking uh, federation uh, federal assistance from the ATF, uh, assistance from uh, and Chicago police, and then also getting more community involvement. Uh, street outreach, violence inter interruption service, things like that would um, help with the whole gun violence uh, issue that's happening here in the city. Are there other actions that the city has not yet committed to that you think would be effective in reducing gun violence? Yeah, that's a good question. I think at the investment in youth programs, if we, if we invest in the youth, because that's where it all starts. If we invest in the youth, uh, giving, giving a sense of belonging and giving them jobs or giving them um, training, doing programs with them, uh, it, it will get them off the streets and then they will be busy. And, and also um, they will not go to the gangs or look for um, things that are gonna harm them down the road. Uh, and then also more involvement from local clergy and churches, you know, that gives them a sense of belonging, acceptance, regardless of the individual condition of the home and family, because it all starts at the home. If they don't feel loved at home, and then they go to the streets, you know, the streets are gonna just, you know, show them love and they're gonna end up you know, doing bad things. So I think um, it's just investing in youth and having you know, local and clergy and, and churches and programs for them. What about park district programs? Do you think that they're effective in involving youth? Oh yeah, most definitely. Honestly, I, I, when I was a kid, I was a, I was a park rat. I was always in the parks, you know, 
playing basketball. I mean, I live my life at the parks at the same time, you know, where, where I grew up in Logan square in the, in the eighties, there was a big gang, um, sense of gangs as well. And I had to, um, go through alleys to go to the parks because on one street is one gang on the other street was another. And my safety was the alley just to get to the park so I could go play basketball with my friends. And I tell you many times, Margaret, you know, we're, we're out there playing and we, there's drive-by shootings, you know, and we duck, we fall to the ground and, you know, we wait, we get back up and we start playing again. Uh, so I grew up around all that. So I have a sense of what's going on. And the park district is a big factor, you know. Um, and I even told this to the, to the mayor, you know, I'm like, back then when the park district, things were free. Now they're charging, you know, families for, for things like that. And I go, we should have a sense of bringing back some free open gym and bringing programs into the park that are free because, uh, if you do that, you have more people coming to the park and so forth. Uh, but park district has is a big factor as well. Thank you. Now, this is a, a long question, so bear with me. The league members okay. have observed that the city council and committees regularly pass agenda items for which the actual contents and text of what is being discussed and approved is not available to the public to see for the public to see until days after the meeting. This is a result of a provision in rule 41 that allows for the mayor and city departments to present direct introduction of items. Thus the public cannot comment before the committee or council vote is taken. In other words, advocacy is stymied. Would you support requiring any such items must be made available to the public no later than two business days before the meeting in, in which the item is introduced? That's a great question. Yes, I'm a proponent of transparency and information. I think the more information the public has, the more transparent city council could be. This will allow the public to, be, to have ample time to formulate and give their comments. But I do, I, I do agree they should, um, be available two days prior of the meeting. Currently, thank you. Currently, when one candidate for mayor or alder person does not receive at least 50% plus 1% of the votes cast in February, a run elect, runoff election occurs in April in which the two top vote getters are on the ballot. And you experienced this in, two, in 2019. What is your view about ranked choice voting in the February, February election to determine the winner in lieu of a runoff? So I, I saw that, <laughs> that uh, ranked choice. Um, so I, I need more information and to, and, and to, to look at it and, and look at both options. So it could make, so I could make an informed decision, but, uh, do you know where they have this, this uh, ranked choice uh, voting available right now? Um, I believe it, it's in Maine. New York City uh, recently had an election using ranked choice voting and it was slow, but it, that was involved with internal mechanisms of how they were handling the votes. Um, it's regarded as an alternative looking at costs and settling questions earlier. Okay. You know, there are pros and cons. Okay. I'll look into that. But it's interesting. That's very interesting. If the Chicago League wanted to support one of your initiatives, what steps would you recommend that the league take? So um, the steps would be um, first when the when the when when the issue or the in initiative is in the committee. Uh, when we have open comment to the public, that would be one way. Another way would be um, calling the chair, the chair of the committee um, and informing them that, you know, 
you support this, this initiative. And then also I, I would recommend that you would contact all 49 aldermen, alder, alder people uh, to voice your, 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 your initiative and, and communicate um, to them what you support. And then um, I would do the same thing as well. Um, go to the chair of the committee, also talk to my members of the committee, and then also in general, the older people in the, in, in the, in the in city council. You think, you think it's useful to have individual league members contact the alderman who represents them? I think it's more uh, powerful having league members who work, who who lives in that that particular ward to call the older person and and support the initiative. It's Thank a strong you. it's a strong message. Yeah. Well, we do believe in in advocacy and and making our views known to the to governing officials. Okay. If, if the Chicago League wanted to support one of your initiatives, uh, um, so what are the initiatives you would like to see taken in, in the remainder of the term that you have? So it, it depends on certain initiative. Um, right now, you know, we're, what we're doing is, um, a lot of things are going on in the city council. I mean, it's just a lot of things. One could be the map. You know, we're talking about redistricting and so forth. And the thing is, we have two different maps or three, actually two different maps now because uh, one group came over to the coalition map. And that would be a way of you guys supporting um, which map that would, you would like to see uh, uh, be voted on or when it goes to referendum as well. If it goes to referendum, you know, we would love to have your uh, initiatives of letting your neighbors and, you know, the voters know, you know, which, which map is going to be uh, more, uh, I would say more effective or more um, that's going to help everybody out at the end of the, at the end of the, and at the end of the year and going to be for the next 10 years. Is there anything specific, um, a program that you're pushing in any one of the committees on which, of which you are a member? Um, at this moment, no. What I'm, what I'm trying to do, and I'm doing research, is that um, so seniors have, they pay property taxes. If they have a two flat, they don't get a, a, um, a reduction or a, a discount on their garbage. So I'm looking into seeing how could, when you apply for a senior freeze and you, and even though a senior has a two flat, um, they could qualify for a reduction in, uh, in uh, garbage collection and sewer. Uh, at this moment, it's not there. The only ones that qualify for that are seniors who own single family homes. But you have several seniors out there that have two, have two flats uh, that don't qualify. So um, I'm working on legislation to see if we could allow that uh, to have a discount and so forth. So, um, you know, hopefully once I get everything in order, I'll introduce it. And hopefully, you know, my colleagues will support it. Well, there are seniors in two flats all over the city. Um, all right. Alderman Cardona, I want to thank you and the Chicago League thanks you for being with us today. And I specifically want to thank your staff for um, assisting us in, in arranging this and scheduling this um, opportunity for us. As a reminder to everyone watching this video, a link to this program will be on the Chicago League's website. Everyone who registered for today's program and who is not a League member will receive an email with the link along with an invitation to join the League as well as to sign up for notices of future programs in this series of Zooming with the Alder People. Next week, again on Thursday, 
on March 3rd at 6 p.m. We hope that you will register to join us at Zooming with the Alder Persons program featuring Alderman Matthew Martin of the 47th Ward. We hope that you will join us for the future Zooming with the Alderman programs. And there are many, there are more than 30 already uh, posted on the league's website. <clears throat> Videos of these interviews are available for viewing on the Chicago League's website under Zooming with the Alderman. So thank you, Alderman Cardona. Appreciate it. And uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being so open. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you all for, for, for uh, interviewing me. And just to let you know, um, a lot of projects are going to be happening in the 31st Ward, and I'm very excited uh, for those projects to be done. <clears throat>